Well, I'm extremely excited. I get excited every time Muse comes out with a new device because you guys are always innovating. And I've been told, I've heard rumors that there is a Gen 3 coming out. Can you can you tell me about the Gen 3? I'm excited too <laughs> and excited for a really good reason. So this is, can you show the camera? There we go. Oh, it's not focused. It's focused on my face. There we go. So this. I noticed there's more sensors this time. Yes. <laughs> this is the Muse Gen 3, Muse S Gen 3. So it has brand new uh, sensor technology. It's so sparkly. It the is. sensors are sparkly now. Delightfully <laughs> sparkly. I love it. Um, not only is it sparkly, the sensors last considerably mm -hmm. longer. So we've been innovating with sensor technology over the years. Right. Um, and this is our latest sensor tech. It is fully washable, flexible, conformable, comfy to wear, and lasts so long. Um, Amazing that that can pick up brainwave signals. I mean, for people that are watching and have seen traditional EEG sensors, these leads that you put like, uh, you know, gel on and you have to part your hair to put them down on your scalp. I mean... I, I just want to address the gravity of what I'm seeing in front of me. <laughs> I mean, it's just simply, simply incredible technology where, where it's at now. Thank you. And so this is the pod. It snaps off. Your battery is in here. You recharge it. It is crazy light. Mm -hmm. So this one's a little bit, is this a little bit bigger than the, uh, the previous one? Um, about the same size. They're the same size, but in the previous one, so the previous one, if you include the edges, it's uh, the same. Yeah. But this pod That's what I noticed. came off. But we would always have what we called the pod gap issue, which would cause your less left ear sensors to not work as well if you didn't clip it in all the way. Okay, okay. So we wanted to get rid of the pod gap problem. Um, and so we made a different connect a different connection point. That makes sense, yeah. And put a whole lot more pins in it because this has a lot more sensors. So in the band itself, this one had the F nears, sorry, this one had the PPG sensor in the pod yeah, um, with a hole cut out, but it didn't lead to as good PPG sensing because you had a little bit of a gap. Um, and so what we were able to do is actually integrate the PPG sensors directly into the band itself. Mm, mm -hmm. And so... The bands are replaceable. So this is Gen 2, this is Gen 3. Um, the bands continue to be replaceable. Yeah. Um, so you can throw it out when you need a new one mm -hmm. and keep the pod. Mm -hmm. um, and in it is a whole new stack of tech. So not only did we put in the upgraded PPG, right flush to the skin with uh, really updated tech inside the PPG, we then expanded it to get SpO2. Mm -hmm. So SpO2 is the oxygen saturation of your blood, which is good to detect things like apneas. Sleep apnea. Yes. And then while we were at it, because Chris Amini, our chief innovation officer, is a complete overachiever, mm. it's like, I think while we're doing the SpO2, we can also get FNIR simultaneously. So what you are looking at is a device that captures EEG, for channel and SpO2 and frontal FNIRs from each of your hemispheres. For years, people have been talking about the holy grail of the combination of EEG and FNIRs and what that could, could show us. And I think we're going to find out this year. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but after doing calls with several of my audience members over the last couple of months, I've come to realize that there's a lot of you out there that are feeling really worn out from the last few years. I know that when you get home from work, you just end up sitting on the couch, doom scrolling and wasting time. You know that you should be doing more and it's not that you don't want to, it's just that your motivation is completely zapped. I get it, your brain is fried and your energy isn't what it used to be. After doing all this biohacking on Tech for Psych, I've come upon a couple of methods and protocols that I think can really help people. And that's why I'm now offering a five day challenge course that I'm calling the Primal Edge Challenge, where I'll show you everything that I've learned over the past 10 years of both practicing psychiatry and being at the cutting edge of neuroscience with Tech for Psych. 
During this challenge, we are going to rewire your brain and body to increase your energy, focus, and motivation. This is not just neurofeedback training or meditation like I've offered in the past. In fact, even if you don't have a neurotech device, I think you can get a ton out of this program. It's a compilation of all the most impactful methods and protocols that you can do at home that I've developed over the past 10 years by trying a lot of different things and tracking my own progress as well as the progress of my clients through brain data. If you do have a Muse, it will be really fun to track your own brain health data through this process, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. I know you can do this, and the time for excuses has come and gone, so click this link below to join my Primal Edge Challenge. I haven't done coaching in two years, and even back then, the spots filled up really quickly, so make sure to sign up now. I want to keep this capped at a reasonable level so I can make sure to answer everyone's questions and do some one-on-ones during the group calls. So don't wait, sign up. I'm really excited to see you there. And now we'll get back to the regular content for your education and enjoyment. So just to review, the the EEG sensors are detecting uh, the brain waves, the voltage changes of your brain. And FNIRS is measuring uh, blood flow because that red light, right, goes through the skull, bounces off uh, your brain's blood flow and back to the sensors in the headband. You got it. So, I mean, we're going to see things that have never really been seen before by using this headband. I'm really curious to see, you know, what correlations people uh, can pick up, both researchers and people using it at home. Yeah, I'm very curious to see as well. So we work with a lot of sleep researchers and um, there's not a lot of sleep research done uh, with FNIRS because traditionally right. it's, it's not a very comfortable thing to sleep with. Um, and so our sleep research community is super excited about it. Um, the cognitive uh, tracking and cognitive training communities very excited yeah. about it because yeah. you're looking at the activity of your prefrontal cortex. Um, and we're really excited about it too, because we have both EEG and FNIRS as well as now the ability to do ERPs. Oh my gosh. You didn't tell me this part yet. Yep. So, uh, how are the ERPs going to be done? Okay. So currently in the app, we have a Stroop task. Um, it's in Perfect. like a, something yeah. called like measure your cognition. Yeah. Um, in that Stroop task, we are not just seeing every time you say it's red when it says green. Um, but we're also able to pick up your ERPs. So for, for the listeners at home, yep. an ERP is an event related potential. When a stimulus happens in your environment, you see a predictable response in the brain. The most common ERP is called the P300. And it, because it happens 300 milliseconds after the stimulus. So if you see a flash of light in your brain 300 milliseconds later, you should see a peak um, that indicates that your brain noticed it, that it was salient and that it responded. And the characteristics of those ERPs are very related to your cognitive processing. So as your cognitive processing starts to decline, those ERPs are going to start to be later. So your brain is not responding as quickly and they're often going to start to be not as nice and tall peaks. Right. They're going to start to be much lower because your brain is not responding properly with the same amplitude, with the same parts of the brain coalescing together simultaneously. So these ERPs are actually really great markers of cognitive function. Mm -hmm. And so traditionally to do an ERP takes a very complicated setup where you need to have very precise syncing between the stimulus and the EEG setup. Um, and it's a very delicate thing that's done in a lab. We have now been able to do this at home. It has taken us years. We've wanted to do ERPs at home. Um, Dr. Olaf Krieg Olson has worked with Muse extensively and he published the first paper demonstrating that Muse could indeed show you an ERP. Right but you still had to do it in the lab environment. Um, and now we're able to uh, collect ERPs in app and then share with you your ERP data to help you track your own cognitive function. That's, um, it's something that we're offering to labs at the moment so we can set up ERPs as part of their laboratory experiments. And uh, with the new Muse, it's something that we're now gonna be able to over time roll out to all of our users. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about uh, sleep and um, reaction time, but uh, where where do like impulse control and cognitive load um, measurements fall into all this? 
what what do you see being done for those? Okay, so we have um, one of the common ways to measure ERPs is a go no go task. Right. And in the go no go task, you are measuring your impulse control. So you see an image being flashed, let's call it a circle. You're supposed to tap every time you see a circle, not tap whenever you see a square. Um, And eventually, if somebody presents you enough circles and the square comes next, you're just going to tap. You're going to think it was going to be a circle (laughs) because you've stopped paying attention, A, and because it's hard for you to stop an impulse that has already been started. Mm -hmm. And so your ability to respond to squares and circles, tapping or not tapping, going or no going, is a really significant marker of things like ADD and ADHD and the ability to pay attention and the ability to inhibit um, and also basically how awake and alert you are. Yeah. So we're able to give you those kinds of tasks. So we will eventually, we have a oddball task, which is very similar to a go, no go task. Um, And from there you can derive that kind of data while also getting the ERPs that are related to it. So an ERP of in a go no go task can not just tell you have you you know errors of omission and commission did you hit did you not hit did you inhibit when you're supposed to or not but also the amplitude of your attention at that time <laughs> how alert you were how you know how paying attention to those circles and squares were you so lots of information about the brain that it reveals and something again that over time, you know, these are incredibly complex things to, to do and to do right. And we only like doing things when they're right. So that has to exist in a research community for a good period of time as it's validated and proved out. Um, and then over time, we're able to share it with everyone. Yeah, I don't think people realize how much of an impact this is going to have <laughs> on just the neuroscience and, uh, community in general. But just, I mean, you think of so many different things that this could be used for research with astronauts, use with athletes, people that just want to, you know, test different things to improve their performance. Um, I mean, this is the epitome of democratizing uh, neurotechnology in a way that's never been done before. I mean, just to give these tools to people to use at home is incredible. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's incredibly exciting. Yeah. Um, all the researchers we're talking to are like, what? You can do that? What? Like at home. Yeah. I have so many like, questions about the like ERP giddy. stuff. Yeah. I, I just wonder with the Bluetooth connection and how that works, but I'm sure that's part of the secret sauce for, for Muse. We have spent years on the timing of it. Yeah. Um, and so there's there's two issues. One is latency and the other is jitter. Yeah. So uh, Bluetooth packets are unreliable. So, you know, you get Bluetooth packets sent every five milliseconds and then a couple packets are withdrawn and then you get yeah. like a bunch of packets all coming together. And so, you know, that is the jitter in the system. And then there's the latency, which is the fact that Bluetooth is going to take five or 10 milliseconds. And, you know, you have the data that goes from here to here to your phone, to your ears. Um, And so we've had to work very hard um, to reduce the latency as much as we can and also control the jitter. And so we have time stamping um, on the headset. We have a timing chip. We have time stamping um, of the packets. We have time... (laughs) Lots yeah. of time stamping yeah. to then be able to um, put back together the picture of the precise millisecond timing of this. And is the app itself able to put the information back together or does yes. it need to go to the cloud and oh, then come back? It goes to the cloud mm-hmm. and to the app, um, all of which take time and yeah. all of which have to be counted for. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that the uh, research on FNIRS is really early. Like you said, there's just not a whole lot of FNIR systems out there that can be used like this, but any predictions at all on what the FNIRs might show us for sleep or for, uh, for cognitive load is, is there any data out there that Muse would be looking for as this rolls out? Yeah. So, um, sleep, there's not a lot of data. You know, mm-hmm. I, I talked to sleep researchers and they're like, Oh yeah, I think I saw a paper on that once. I don't remember what it said. Mm-hmm. This is going to be so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Just ground break, um, groundbreaking, you know, and then on cognitive load, so uh, there's a lot of work on FNIRs and cognitive load in yeah. terms of uh, engagement of the prefrontal cortex mm-hmm. um, and the ability to also be able to train the prefrontal cortex um, and improve your attention and your cognition. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we see this as something that is both a tracking tool and uh, eventually a training tool as well. Yeah, I think some of Olav's research showed that, uh, you know, as cognitive load increases, more blood flow increases the frontal lobe, which is pretty logical. You would imagine that those neurons need more uh, nutrients to handle the increased information processing it takes to uh, 
to do those tasks. I think uh, it's funny. One of the tests that I've seen him do before is, uh, you know, play one Tetris game versus three Tetris games and switch back and forth between <laughs> them, you know, just these funny uh, cognitive load tests. Well, I'm, I'm so excited about uh, the Gen 3. And uh, I think when people hear this announcement, um, they're, they're going to be excited too. So um, what can we see from, from Muse over the course of 2025 as this rolls out in um, the roadmap? Yeah. So this is going to come out uh, Q1 2025. Yeah. It's probably when you're listening to this yep. video. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to see uh, more and more tools come out with it. So initially you're going to see the uh, FNIRS reading inside of the app. Um, and then you're going to see the ERP tools coming mm -hmm. out as well. Mm -hmm. um, and more surprises over 2025. Yeah, we should mention um, uh, some other third-party um, apps are coming available for Muse as well. I know um, Alphabets is coming on yep. online. Would you mind talking about them and any other uh, third-party apps to look at um, in the course of 25 as well? Sure. Um, so Alphabets, they are music for alpha, basically neurofeedback. Mm -hmm. um, and so you select your favorite tune. As you get into alpha, that tune plays. And so it encourages you to maintain your alpha state. And that's mm -hmm. been shown to have both um, state. So in that moment, you increase your alpha as well as trait over time, you have more alpha. Um, and we have MindLift, who's a great partner of ours and they continue to grow their suite of neurofeedback tools that can be used both with clinicians uh, and by clinicians or individually. So you can check them out in the mm -hmm. MindLift website. And then we have a distributor in Japan who's building an app, Costco. All right. Well, I think we did the gen three release and, um, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. If you are looking to get a Muse S Generation 3 Athena, there is a discount link below for our Tech Recyc audience. And if you'd like to work more closely with me, Dr. Cody, to transform your brain health in as little as five days, take a look at the link below for my Primal Edge five-day challenge program, and I'll see you there.